What's your take on Emoticon? I don't particularly like the guy. But it looks like we'll need his help with those ID guns. Sonny's been doing a little sleuthing for us. Drebin, a well-known gun launderer in war economy circles. He's a businessman who deals mainly in selling black market firearms to small PMCs and local militia. Somalia, the Balkans, Lebanon, Darfur, Chechnya, Timor, Peru, the Punjab, Kashmir, Colombia. This guy really gets around. How's he pull it off anyway? You can create a non-ID gun by replacing the ID recognition chip with a counterfeit version. This enables you to bypass the ID recognition process and use the gun. The problem is that there's still a record of the chip being replaced on the system side. Drebin's an employee of AT Security. He must have connections on the inside erasing records for him. You think the Patriots are involved somehow? I'm not so sure. If the Patriots were running the system from behind the scenes, then a weasel like Drebin would be a real pain in their collective ass. Can he be trusted? Remember, Drebin's a green collar. He makes his living off the war economy. He doesn't let emotions get in the way of business, and he never gets his own hands dirty. The only thing he trusts is money. I share your concern, but what if we keep him at arm's length? Use him only to get intel and the supplies we need. Keep it strictly business. All right. So, we ready to make a deal or what? Okay then, let's talk business. This is a war zone. There's product coming in here by the truckload. And you'll be picking up a lot of guns in the field, I'm sure. Whatever guns you don't need, I'll take and buy them off you. That'll earn you points you can cash in for services. Like what? I'll launder your ID guns. No more locks. And I can also sell you the guns I've got in stock. Let me show you. To ensure you can use non-ID guns, I'm gonna have to suppress the old nanomachines you got in you. Otherwise, they'll interfere with the system. Here, stick yourself with this. It's full of suppressor nanomachines. Relax, it won't hurt. You're scared of needles or something? Now you can use non-ID guns, no problem. Hey, be nice to our guest. Step outside. Boo. See? No problem. From now on, when you pick up an ID gun that says lock, you just let me know. You name it, I can launder it. Of course, it'll cost you. The going rate depends on the war price at the time. <clears throat> Man, I gotta give this shit a rest. Looks like you're doing pretty well for yourself. You might say that. What with the war economy and all, and the system clamping down on things. System codes are the law now, and control's essentially absolute, paving the way for fat profits if you're willing to bend the law. The man keeps on growing thanks to the war economy. 
I sell ID guns to the PMCs and state armies, and naked guns to terrorist groups and paramilitaries. And these ID guns can't be sold on the black market. System's practically a license for us arms dealers to print money. Privatizing the military's made the PMCs big and bloated. And the fatter the PMCs get, the line between civilian and soldier is gonna get real blurry. Sooner or later, the whole damn human race is gonna be green collars. More like... We're all gonna be fighting proxy wars. But hey, this war economy puts the food on my table. You're a green collar too, aren't you? Yeah, it's in your eyes. You've seen a lot of combat. What makes you think you know me? Nothing to be ashamed of. I'm the same way. I grew up here, too. I got no interest in the outside world. All right, then. If you need me, holla. We specialize in speedy service. Catch my drift. You just gotta love Drebin, man. He's like a, he's a black gun launderer with bleached hair, magic tricks, uh, a pet monkey, a tank, little catchphrases. He just uh, he's got everything. I think if when they, if they ever do make a movie, the guy who plays it, you know, Drebin has to be like top notch because he's just such a great character. I know what you're thinking. But Drebin does have a point. The world depends on war, on the war economy. Can you imagine what would happen if war just disappeared overnight? Otacon, you and Drebin both mentioned something about a war price earlier. What did you mean by that? It's a kind of market price, one that fluctuates according to demand, not only for PMCs and military industry, but for the production, distribution, and energy supply networks that support them. <laughs> It's been growing by leaps and bounds, and investors are really starting to take notice. As the fighting in any given area becomes increasingly intense and prolonged, the war price goes up. No doubt Drebin's rates are linked to that war price. The longer and bloodier a battle becomes, the higher service prices are gonna get. To put it another way, the quieter things are, the better the bargains. Snake, we'll use the Mark II to deal with Drebin from here on out. He's what you might call a street vendor. The Mark II can act as a kind of delivery boy, connect you with him. I'm adding a Drebin menu item to the Mark II's weapon menu. Whenever you pick up multiple units of the same weapon, any extras will automatically be sold to Drebin. Any ammo that's inside gets added to your cash. In other words, you keep the ammo, and the weapon itself gets traded to Drebin for points. I see. You can then use the points you've earned to unlock ID guns or buy new weapons. Sounds good. We should assume Dremen has other agents collecting guns for him besides you, Snake. You know, freelance green collars who collect weapons in exchange for services? Guess I'll have to rely on him for now. Okay. Now go meet up with our informants, Rat Patrol. Okay, so he gives us a nice little present, which is... Snake, hurry and get to the rendezvous point with our informants. First, you'll have to get to the other side of that collapsed building. The only way across is straight through. He really does talk a lot sometimes. Okay, so met Drebin, got the M4. I know what. Careful, Snake. The walls could come down. Just shut up, Olicon. Let me get through, man. God's sake. 
It's not like there's any risk of you dying here. I mean, there is like a little section where the the kind of the bit in front of you falls down, but it's nothing serious. These guys are going to die, so I might as well put them to sleep. They don't know it, but I'm actually saving their lives here. <laughs> Good guy, Snake. Let me just see. There they are. Okay. I love Snake's reaction when uh, Drebin says older generation of nano machines. Okay. So yeah, this next section can be a little bit more annoying, but now that I've kind of pledged my allegiance to the PMCs, I'm just going to try and take it a little bit slow and just go together with them and just take out any um, any PMC soldiers that I see that's going to trigger an alert. Almost through now. So yeah, now we get to collect the weapons all over the place and there's going to be another cutscene. And this is quite a funny one as well. A wise grin from Snake. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you see a guy taking a dump and he gets caught. So in MGS, when people take a dump, well, it tends to be one guy who has toilet issues. And that's Johnny. So even though we don't know it yet, anyone who plays MGS should kind of have an inkling that this guy is probably Johnny. Or one of the Johnnies, because there's a Johnny in every game. And the time the time span of these games is like 50 years, so he's one of the generation of Johnnies. Okay, so... Okay, Snake. Hurry to the rendezvous point. Yeah, that's exactly what I've been doing. Alright, cheers. Okay. This is my... This is kind of my weapon of choice for this game. Headshots are one-shot kills, pretty much. And uh, you can get suppressors. It's kind of easy to get, as you can see. You get it very early in the game. I mean, once you've got this weapon, you don't. I don't really see why you need much else other than other than boss battles and gecko, gecko and stuff like that. So yeah, this is going to be my new uh, M9. I'm just going to be using this to snipe people from long range and just get through while supporting my militia. You got my back. Me up. Okay. It's a bit impolite. Fine. Oh yeah. If if I ever had to be a soldier, I'd definitely want to be a sniper. It just probably because I'm a pussy, but still, I would just not. I would never be on the front line. Just kind of hide and snipe. That's why I don't play games like Modern Warfare and all that kind of crap, because all I'd want to do is just kind of sit in a corner and snipe people. And from what I know, I don't think they tend to like that. But this um, this whole Dreaming concept is, is really awesome, the whole, you know, using the Mark II as a... Oh, shut the fuck up. Using uh, the Mark II as a way to to kind of buy and, buy and sell weapons. It's pretty cool. The whole Dreaming points and all that kind of stuff. You get some... 
You get some really cool weapons. You can customize all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's seriously cool. I owe you one. I I saw something. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So now that I've already sided with the out. militia, I don't need um, I don't need the uniform on. So I can make use of the octo camo. You see, the last time uh, I played through was on like easy or very easy or something like that. So using this weapon, even if you hit them like in the leg, it was a one-shot kill. So I've got a bit of the laziness from that, I think. If it's not a headshot, then you won't get a one-shot kill, I think, at this level. Come on, move with me. Ah, oh, they're so slow. If you if you really know what you're doing, you can just kind of go straight through. But I like to kind of try and work with the militia. After seeing them get battered in the in the opening of the game, I want to help them out. But they're just really slow. You see, if you go too far ahead, you get um, PMCs coming from like the side streets, and they can just kind of see you, and you get an alert. Oh, come on! Really? Oh, you bastard! Finally. So, I think once I snipe these guys out, I might try and make use of the the rocket launcher. Right, where are they? There. Whew. Again, these are nice little additions as well. I mean, it's all it's all new stuff that you've never experienced before as a as an MGS player. There doesn't really seem to be that many of them around. I'm not seeing many PMC soldiers. Take, them out. Take who out? I can't see anyone. Then I'm just going to keep going. Damn it. Fire. Get over here. Are these guys fighting like a different war? Where is he shooting at? I'm so confused. Let's just keep going. I'm just going to go it alone from here. I can't bother to wait. Whoa. Shit. Okay, so yeah, they're still fighting with these guys. There you go. Come on, boys. Let's go. Almost got shot. Oh. It's annoying because you take these guys out and then they just um, they just bring in, bring in new guys. So, you might have to do it a few times. Ah, come on to wait. Screw this. I think there's one guy over here. If you run straight through, you'll get an alert, so... You need to be careful. I'm not going to take any risks. Okay. Got the camo in full effect. I think he's behind that, that concrete barrier. Can I see him? Damn it. I know he's there, but I can't see him. Screw it. Snake. BMC airstrike. Yeah, I'll be out of here by then. I think I should be okay. Go, go, go! Phew. Alright, so no more soldiers from here on out. Well, for like the next 20 minutes anyway. Because we're going to have some very long cutscenes as well. But first I need to get to the rendezvous point, And that's going to involve me going to the top of this place. And it's rigged with lots of traps. Including claymores and sleeping gas mines. But what it also has is uh, a fair few items. The last time I came here, I kind of just ran straight up, so I'm just going to try and make sure I explore most of the corridors here. I swear you can't go up from this side. This is the side that I usually don't take. It should be blocked at some point. Yeah. The reason I'm going slow is because um, you've got sleeping gas mines like on the stairs and that kind of stuff, so... If you run into them, you're just going to spend some time, like, 
spazzing around with the with the left analog stick trying to wake Snake up. And I'm gonna actually make use of the sleeping gas mines for the for the kind of well, boss battle that's coming up in a bit. More Playboy magazines. Collected like a whole year's worth of issues. Okay, so there you go. You can either shoot it or you can crawl over it if you want to collect it and obviously I prefer to collect it. Because this is pretty much the only time in the game where I, where I actually use it. So, if I have any left, actually, I think I can buy some anyway now. So I'll make use of it a bit later on as well, I think. Oh, shit. Wow. In reality, he would have got blown to smithereens there. But this is Solid Snake. See, there's another one. See, this one's really obvious, but the other one, I completely missed it. Maybe they put like a stealth Claymore mine. But this time there's no Mr. X to tell you that there's Claymore mines there, unfortunately. Ugh, there are a lot of places to explore here. Sleeping gas mines. You can actually get through this game like really quickly again because the cutscenes are so long, provided that you don't watch them and you really know what you're doing for the normal sections of the game. I think the record is something like an hour and 34 for a big boss emblem from start to finish, which is just insane because I've been probably playing for like over an hour already and I'm like 60% of the way through Act 1. So. <laughs> It's amazing how quickly people can play these games. I actually tried speedrunning once, like I said. Oh, for fuck's sake, that's twice now. I, sh I should know. I should know better than that. I should know better. This place is really silent. I'm, I'm not liking it. I might put on some, some background music later. So, what was I saying? Yeah, I was saying it's insane how quickly some of these people can can get through this game. And uh, I actually tried it once where that time where I said I'd actually got the big boss emblem, I got a bit obsessed with this game. So I was like, I want to try and do a speedrun. And if you, if any of you have ever seen my attempt at MGS3 speedrun, you can check my videos for it. I tend not to follow through with my kind of aim of completing a speedrun. Because I kind of get excited by it and then I start to do it and I realise just how long it is and I get bored of the game so I just give up and uh, when I tried it with MGS4 I think I got to I got to this stage there's a there's a boss battle after these cutscenes and that's as far as I got and even me I think first time or I did it in something like I got to the rendezvous point that we're about to go to in like eight minutes and 37 seconds or something like that so it's taken me an hour but it can be done in like nine minutes or something stupid like that so yeah that's that's a bit of MGS4 speed running for you. I think the the record holder's name is uh, Cosmos JP, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So if you want to see this game done in ridiculously quick standards, then uh, go watch his videos. What is this bit? I don't remember going through this bit. I mean, it's MGS. You've got to have some kind of air duct. Oh, it looks like MGS1 all over again. Stupid rat. Ugh. Wow, that's, that's some that's some slow panning. There better be some good items down here. Noodles is it's just not going to cut it. Surely, if they're making you come down here, it must be worth it for something. Is there something on this side? Yes. PSS. Hmm. I don't know if you can get that at some other point in the game, I don't, I don't remember right now. But maybe it's quite a rare gun or something, I don't know. But you can probably just buy it from Drebin anyway, so... Mm. Uh, I shouldn't have come down here. I'm thinking maybe they should have had like background music. I know they give you the iPod, but then you have to disable your whatever item you've got equipped which is a little bit annoying 
very quiet. Should I go down? No. Seeing as this continues, maybe there's something good at the end of it. Maybe there's like a camo or a mask or something. Probably not, but... Ugh. Okay, that was pointless. And I've ended up on the lower floor as well. Great. Okay, so... Uh, there you go. There you go. You do not... Oh, you motherfucker. Damn it. So it takes you to the other end of the staircase as well. The one which I didn't clear out. And that's going to be... Is that going to be blocked? Yeah. Urgh. So do not bother going down that air vent. Just wasting your time. Now we'll go all the way back. <sighs> Stupid air vent. Alright, so we're going to meet some... Uh, some more old faces well face one of them one of them is also an old face but we don't quite know it yet let me just get some cool camo going I like it when snake looks that color all right let's go rat patrol